Uh, give me one more minute. I need to do something. So there's this 
dude, um, Odalon, uh, who claims to be the Lord Barnier's um, assistant. And now he's offering to become Jacopo's as assistant as the Lord. Um, Jacopo is kind of wary of this guy, but he decides to accept him as his assistant um, because he figures he needs help uh, to, you know, get started as a lord. Um, also, Maria um, voiced her concern that Jacopo's not going to be a good lead, uh, a good lord. He, he won't know how to do it. So that's what she's worried about. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> so that's where we left off. After giving me just enough time to recover, Odalon quickly got to work instructing me in everything I needed to know to be a lord. My first priority was to revitalize the city, cleaning up the mess my predecessor had left it in. As much as I wanted to ensure that everyone had food and water, it simply wasn't possible to make happen overnight. We would need to significantly expand our farmland, build additional granaries, repair existing irrigation canals, not to mention crack down on crime and disorder. There was so much to do it was almost dizzying, but the last thing I had time to do was wine. That said, none of it could happen with a snap of the fingers take time and manpower, which meant we would have to use existing stores in the meantime. I asked the people, particularly among the upper class, to relinquish ownership of their stockpiles for me to redistribute among the population. cries of dissatisfaction were drowned out by cheers of support when I explained that it was for everyone's sake that we would need to band together to carry the whole city through what would be a rocky transition. As I was patting myself on the back for a job well done, Odalon shook his head and said, "'Twill hold a year at most." have enough stores to last at least three years, though. Two if we want to be extra safe. They will set your manor ablaze long before the stores run dry.
Excuse me? Why would they? I'm obviously doing everything in my power to revitalize the city. And I was the one who freed them from the claws of the tyrant. The people see only the results. Though they accept your promises of improvement now, if in a year's time they do not see those words bear fruit, their trust in you will wither away. That you came from the slums is viewed now as a heroic rise to power. But your past will soon be turned against you, used to delegitimize you. You must produce for them tangible results. God, I knew this wouldn't be easy, but still. It boils my blood to think he, to think my predecessor sat around on his ass all day. Did he even accomplish anything in his entire time as the Lord? I can think of only one truly positive effect of his regime. His support for the arts. His what? Surely you have seen the number, the numerous pieces of art adorning this manor's walls. He would often treat himself with works from the finest artists and artisans in the land. Oh, you mean all those paintings and vases and fancy drapes? Bunch of worthless junk, every last bit of it. None of it will do anything to fill the people's empty stomachs. It would seem you understand not the value of art. Well, I did grow up in the slums. Do you know what purpose art serves? To make you feel better? It's nice to have around, but not much more than that. Bribes, my boy. Those who hunger for power similarly hunger for ways to flaunt it the singularity of a piece of art fills that role. Some have a genuine appreciation for art, others merely use it as a tool. But nonetheless, skilled craftsmen, artists, and their work naturally gravitate toward those with power. It would be wise for you to consider dressing somewhat less pedestrian soon. Now, we should be able to put the former lord's possessions to good use in helping you build up valuable relationships. You mean, start handing out bribes? Indeed, but remember, they are negotiation tools. You must use them where they provide you the greatest returns. Negotiation, huh? Alright, I think I see what you're getting at. If I want to revitalize the city in a year, I'm going to need help from my good neighbors. In exchange for provisions and workers, I offer the various counts pieces from Barnier's collection. Sound about right? Precisely. My, my. You are much cleverer than I would expect of a man from the slums. Now, if only you would become accustomed to this manner of thinking, you could become a fine leader in short order. I appreciate the concern, old man. I will dispatch messengers and, ar and arrange meetings with the Counts so we can begin anon. I hope I do not have to remind you, but you will need to be very careful with your words, Lord Garnier. Yeah, I know. Ah. You seem quite tired, Lord Garnier. You think? Every day I have to go meet with someone new. 
and I spend all my travel time learning how to read and write, it's enough to exhaust anyone. Tis necessary, nonetheless. Illiteracy will only... Yes, yes, I know. You said I look tired, and I'm telling you why that is. I never said I had a problem with it. I overstepped. My apologies. Your diligence has been invaluable in earning the Count's favor, Lord Barnier. They think quite fondly of you. Is that so? Because that's certainly not the impression I'm getting. They put on a facade of friendliness, but beneath the surface, they're all laughing, trying to figure out how to best use me, or just outright scoffing. Not a one of them sincerely trusts me. I'm just a pawn to them. We are all pieces on a, one another's boards. And what's that supposed to mean? would be most prudent to consider that unqualified friendship simply does not exist in high society. All interpersonal relationships are built upon a foundation of mutual benefit, save for exceedingly rare, short-lived exceptions. Nonetheless, we should not consider being used as a bad thing. We all climb atop each other's boards, offering ourselves up as a powerful piece. And so do they offer themselves to us. Should you wish to survive in high society, you must always ensure your peers see you as a piece worth playing. That would mean you're putting yourself out there as well, old man. Indeed. I am your pawn, Lord Barnier. I offer myself to you, and in your using me, I gain this position as counsel to the Lord. It is a far more practical and reliable system than one founded on something so uncertain as emotion, would you not say? Which is to say, I'm a pawn to him as much as he is to me. I suppose so. Then I too will have to ensure I remain useful, lest I be swept aside as another Barnier brought in to take my place. Ho oh, ho ho! Sharp words, my lord. But worry not, for I have no qualms with your performance at present. Now, Lord Barnier, we must discuss your next... Hold on a sec, would you? Yes, sir? Do you mind not calling me Lord Barnier in private? I can understand why you'd want to keep up the charade even when no one's looking. But frankly, I'm just not comfortable with it. Very well. Then, my lord, it shall be. Can't say I'm surprised he won't use my real name, but still. Yeah, that'll do. Thank you. Not at all. Now, back to business, my lord. It took long enough, but we're finally starting to see some real progress. Who knew negotiation was so much work? You should be proud of your accomplishments, my lord. Tis hardly an easy feat to amass that much manpower and resources in only six months. Doing better than expected, huh? How's public opinion looking? Reports should be coming in by now, I assume. Some dissatisfaction, but numbers are within expectations. Dissatisfied? With what? I've spent every waking moment these past six months working my ass off to revitalize this city, and people aren't happy with that? They should be jumping with joy. My lord, you 
must understand that it is impossible to satisfy everyone. A degree of discontent is to be expected. Even so, it should be blindingly obvious how much better I'm doing than that previous basket of rainbows and kittens. All is forgotten on the gentle ebb and flow of time. Past injustices matter little in the face of the present. It hasn't even been a year. The people do not genuinely care about you, nor will they ever. They may sing your praises one day and forget about you the next. I believe we have been through this before. Surely there's someone out there who gets it. That is wishful thinking, my lord. You could work yourself to your very bones, and the people would merely see you as fulfilling your duty. You must not seek their approval. More will be expected of you, and more will you be the subject of undeserved resentment for the simple reason that you exist in a position of power. Only those in a similar position can understand your hardships. Ultimately, then, you have two choices. Either dedicate yourself in service of your people, or mercilessly exploit them like your predecessor. bastard's footsteps. I pray your heart remains true, that you remain a wise and caring lord. Damn it. So what specifically aren't people happy about? The foremost is food shortages. This was anticipated, and all we can do is ask them to persevere. The second comes from the upper class. Go on. They are, quite naturally, displeased about being made to surrender their stockpiles. It would be prudent to offer them remuneration in the near future. They're doing well enough for themselves already. My lord. I know, just letting off some steam. So I get to go butter up all the rich men in town. Wonderful. The whole idea was to help the less well-off, yet here I am. I understand that you are not pleased about this, my lord. But do remember, you have more to fear from a few of the upper class banding together than the entirety of the slums. For they wield a most troublesome weapon, an upper class upbringing. They know precisely who to tell and what to tell about you to tarnish your reputation in the blink of an eye. And do not placate yourself by thinking the common man will see through the attempts to undermine you. Even if they did, an unlikely supposition, they could do nothing to counter it. They are powerless. But it was the people at the bottom who pulled most of the weight organizing and executing the revolution. It was an exceptional set of circumstances that allowed the revolution to, t <clears throat> to take place as it did. Not the least of which was the Lord's status as unequivocally evil in the eyes of the people. You will not find them all agreeing on anything so readily now. Alright, alright, I get it. Is I gotta win over all the rich people, or my whole operation's going to come gr to a grinding halt, right? So, as much as it rubs me the wrong way, I'll do what I have to do. A wise decision, my lord. 
Is that the last of the complaints? No. The influx of immigrants has caused an increase in general unrest. Of course it has. I bring them in to help with the restoration effort, and they go and cause their own new set of problems. It's like I'm chasing my tail here. So long as there are people under your authority, never will you be completely free of strife. You're telling me. So would increasing the guard's presence in the city help keep the peace? Most of those with the training necessary are already deployed, meaning you would need to have new guards trained from the ground up. You will have to mobilize them where they are most needed. In other words, tighten your grip on the slums. So now I've got to take away their freedom. I know you have a personal attachment to that area, my lord must cast that aside. No longer are you the man you once were. The slums should have never been allowed to fall into such lawlessness in the first place. You will merely be restoring it to its proper state. truly wish to bring prosperity to this land, you must eventually scale down and then eliminate the slums. But if I get rid of the slums, I'll be getting rid of their home. My lord, I know, I understand what you're getting at, and I understand that everything you're saying is perfectly logical. I just... Can we hold off on that for a bit? A bunch of guys down there formed this peacekeeper group to, you know, keep the peace. They'd gladly help out if we could talk to them, I'm sure. We can scale up our patrols, but no stepping on their toes. Got it? As you command, my lord. Hard to believe it's been a whole year. It feels like I only just started yesterday, yet also like I've been doing this forever. You are looking somewhat worse for wear, my lord. Do I? Who am I kidding? You're right. On the other hand, you don't look like you've even lost an hour of sleep this entire year to show how inexperienced I really am. While it is true that I have been in this position for many years, I also do not bear nearly as much responsibility as you. I merely stand in the background and offer you small pieces of advice. All the while, you face the crowds directly, negotiate with counts, make dozens of difficult decisions. If there is one thing I have learned in all my years, it is that I could never begin to imagine the weight a ruler must carry. Never mind one who was never raised to take the throne and thrust themselves into the labyrinth of politics and high society. It would be a greater surprise if the trials had not taken their toll. That reminds me. Barnier was lord for a full decade before we took him out, wasn't he? And as I recall, he wasn't as much of a despot early on. If just one year has taken this much out of me much longer before I'm no, no longer able to act like a reasonable human being. No, don't think like that, Yakopo. Actually, forget it. What matters is that we seem to be doing a good job minimizing discontent. Indeed, you have successfully made it through the first year. 
The city is decidedly more presentable than it was when you took the throne. There are precious few who could rep replicate your accomplishments in such short time, my lord. You would do well to take pride in your work. Pushing to do everything so quickly has taken its toll. The people are worn thin. Slaves are dying by the droves. I still have a ways to go before there's anything I can be proud of. Slaves are the tools of progress, my lord. Tools do not last forever and must be replaced regularly. And you can't build a house with your bare hands, I get it. You learn quickly. Not even a year ago, I would have been up in arms about the number of slaves dying. But now, they're just numbers to me. Apparently, my worldview has changed quite a bit. It is about time we started considering our next step. Meaning? Meaning your efforts thus far have merely been toward repairing the damage caused by your predecessor. You make it sound like all this has just been warm-up. My apologies. I did not mean to discount your great efforts, my lord. I was simply speaking of the grander scheme. Yeah, I got that. You want to settle on a direction for how to grow the city, right? Indeed. The status quo is vastly inadequate for bringing prosperity to this land. And there is no saying when the surrounding territories may cease being so friendly. <clears throat> and set their eyes upon conquering us. <clears throat> but of course, you cannot keep your eyes trained outward in fear of attack and allow the land to devour itself from the inside either. So what you're saying is it's a balancing act. Precisely. So, what kind of advancements do I want to pursue? There is something that's been on my mind. This land is ill-suited to growing crops. When I lived down in the slums, I had no perspective and figured that was what... and figured that what we produced here was no different than anywhere else. Now I know better. The grapes used for our wine are miserable compared to what I've been served elsewhere, as is nearly everything else we grow. I can only assume the land itself is to blame. Oh ho ho, the wine from the south is indeed exceptional. You quite nearly gave me a heart attack when you leapt from your chair in the middle of a meeting shouting, this is nothing like the wine from home. Uh, enough. That never happened. It was my first time tasting anything like it, all right? Anyone would have had the same reaction. Oh, ho, ho. You have grown much, but nevertheless, you are still quite green. God, I really need to watch myself around this man. In any case, it would be ideal if we could begin producing higher quality grapes. Not necessarily to compete with the South, but enough to be serviceable. Efforts to improve our farmland are underway, although it could take some time before we see the progress. Positions, my lord. Actually, 
I was thinking it might be best to cut back on agriculture. I do elaborate. What if we were to build the city up into a trade hub of sorts? Meaning, we wish to open our gates to our neighbors? Exactly. One thing the city has going for it is its wealth of artisans. But for years, we've only ever exported our goods. I want to bring people here to purchase. We reduce taxes for merchants and give them special privileges. Set tariffs and border taxes lower than they are in the capital. And business will naturally find its way here. This land may be less than optimal for farming, but it's more than adequate for trade. We're in a convenient location to serve as a hub for the surrounding realms. Rather than close our borders and wall ourselves off entirely, opening up and making ourselves of value to our neighbors is far more likely to dissuade, dissuade po potential invasion. We're all pieces on one another's boards, isn't that right? Who says that can't apply to the entire city? The best way to expand without stepping on anyone's toes is to do so in a way that benefits them as well as us. What do you think? A rather aggressive strategy you propose, my lord. If I may be so bold, there will be many obstacles to this plan's success. You will need to arrange meetings with the head of each realm you intend to invite, the order and timing of which will be crucial to its success. Furthermore, the influx of outsiders will be a source of much tension among your people. So you think I'm aiming too high? You are indeed aiming exceedingly high. Your obstacles will be numerous and precipitous. Nonetheless, obstacles can be overcome. Your exhaustion is nothing compared to the wariness that awaits you down this path. Do be a well aware of this, my lord. You're damn right I am. If I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna go all in. manor sat atop a tall hill. Gazing out, the city stretched before me. Countless columns of smoke rising from the buildings, the people scurrying about like so many ants. Oh, maybe this is still Yukopo. From up here, I had the perfect view of the bustle of the city, but I was too far away to feel the life breathing through it, to think I used to be one of those tiny little specks. Thousands of people lived there. They had families, jobs, friends, hobbies, but as much as I was cognizant of that fact, I no longer grasped on I no longer grasped it on anything more than a conceptual level. It was incredible just how much my view of the world had changed in merely a year's time. I'm going to go out into the world, I said. I thought that clawing my way to the top of the ladder would let me see it. Would let me experience it, that with power I could have the whole world at my fingertips, but reality wasn't so simple. This sure isn't what I was looking for. Hell, 
I feel like the chain's just gotten tighter around my neck. There's no way to truly grasp the view from this height without climbing up and seeing it for yourself. And that was exactly where I was a year ago, blind to the reality of life in the upper e echelons. Fantasizing about a world that didn't exist. Unlike the me of the past, I did have the satisfaction of feeling like I was accomplishing big things. But was that really worth... <coughs> Cutting myself off from all my friends? Did those achievements really justify a bloody revolution? Or, I suppose I should ask, was this work valuable enough to me to justify it all? Reminiscing about days long gone wasn't going to help anything, and in fact, it only served to cause me pain. I couldn't return to that time. This was where my quest for power had brought me, and now, I had to live out my days as lord of this land. Telling myself day after day that it was far better than being a powerless slum rat. God, I've been so busy these past few weeks. My eyes are... One day, I'll show you the world. Do you ever get tired of saying that? You gotta think big. Dream. The world's changing all around us. A life just fighting to make it by day to day is hardly a life at all. I... I don't want to spend the rest of my days confined to this tiny little corner of the world. Well... Try not to let your dreams grow so big they crush you. I'm sure I'll be fine. I'll just have you sing for me if it ever gets to be overwhelming. Why would I be there? Why wouldn't you? It's hard to show you the world if I don't bring you with me. Knowing you, you still won't know where you want to go. So I'll bring you with me. We can find a place for you together. Pretty good deal, huh? All I don't need to see the world. All I want is... off for a second there. It feels like those days were an eternity ago. I don't need to see the world. All I want is... All you want is what? Morgana? What were you trying to tell me? Feels like a whole different place here now. You think? Looks like the same old nasty dump it's always been. He's talking about the whole city, you dolt. Exactly. Things are on the up and up in the city proper, but we ain't seeing a scrap of it down here. The heck's up with that? All the new shops are spilling out past the city border. The highway into towns turned into a full-blown bazaar. Ooh, sounds nice. Is there anything in that damned head of yours? We're saying, how come we're still living like rats if they got enough spare coin to build all that market space? Hell, with all these damn immigrants coming in, the slums are an even bigger shithole than before. You know... I never thought much of it till now, but you're right. The 
gang's been a lot busier lately with all the drifters. And Yakopo, er, Lord Barnier, ain't showed his mug down here even once since he took over. I mean, I get that the bloody lord can't spend all day hanging out in the slums, but he could at least visit. Instead, he's spending all his time buddying up with the rich folks. And we used to be such good friends, too. Wonder if he's planning to just not bother with us at all. I hope not, but... That's sure what it's looking like. You'd think he'd at least throw us a bone rather than letting the merchants and upper class take coin baths in his coffers. I guess when he became one of them, he just he became just like them too. I feel like we're in the exact same place we were a year ago. He's no different in the old Barnier. Find anything? Uh, yep, got the proof you was looking for. But if you'd be so kind as to never give me a job like this again, I'd be hanged thrice over if the nobles found out I was sniffing around in their business. Oh, quit being such a bitch. You didn't steal nothing or kill anyone. You're fine man's secrets can sometimes be worth more than his life. But on to business. Your suspicions were correct. <laughs> well, fuck me sideways. Here's your pay. Take it and piss off. Nice doing bits. Hey, hold up now. I risked me neck to get that for you. And this is all I get in return? Got a problem with that, you little bitch? No, sir. Don't you worry. You'll get your fair due shortly. These construction costs are really starting to pile up. Can't we put the manor repairs off until we've taken care of more pressing matters? Like using that money to help the poor. The Lord and his residents are the face of this land. If you wish for this city to continue thriving upon the fruits of your relationships with the surrounding realms, you must maintain a minimum level of respectability, my lord. Merchants, in particular, are merciless judges of appearance. Of this you can be certain. No respectable merchant will do business on equal terms with the city whose lord refuses to take care of his own home. I get that, but still, it's so much money. These are necessary expenses to acquire the resources required to aid the lower class, we must increase the rate of production. Efforts must begin at the top and gradually work down. You must not be in such a great rush, my lord. The work you are performing is on a much larger, longer scale than perhaps that of which you are accustomed. You have a point. Then, let the construction continue. I'm definitely coming to see just how crucial a bit of embellishment can be to surviving in high society. Every engagement is like throwing myself into a lion's den. Everyone surrounding me, measuring me up. Question my pedigree, some with their eyes, some with their mouths. 
Some even attempt to dig up dirt on me in order to tilt the scales in their favor. Oh yeah, and there was that one time when I was straight up shouted at, right to my face. You're no more a damn noble than any of those other rats whose nest you crawled out of, if I recall. Not that he was wrong. I took the throne by force. It's only natural that people are going to have their suspicions. That I came from the slums is just the icing on the cake. I'm damn lucky if condensation... Conden... Excuse me. Condescension is the worst treatment I get on a first encounter. And then there are the distant relatives Barnier lets slip through the cracks, slithering back up to assert their right to the land. There are a lot more people out to get me than I first anticipated. Do remain strong, my lord. <laughs> I will always be strong. If I so much as let these wolves smell weakness, they'll pounce all over me. Like hell I'm going to let that happen. I won't have time to work on helping the poor if I have to spend my days fending off packs of bloodthirsty nobles. I must always appear strong under any circumstances. I, of all people, should know just how easily a lord can be dethroned. And I'll be next if I leave even the slightest opening. I have to do whatever it takes to make sure that's not my future. Perhaps you should get some rest, my lord. Excuse me? Are you insane? I have to review the construction budget so that... Allow me to handle that. I will get you something to drink. Perhaps a glass of that southern wine you are so fond of? It is quite sweet. Perfect for alle alleviating built-up fatigue. I am not fatigued. Come now, please take this request from an overly concerned consul, my lord. Fine, you win. It's hard to believe it's only been a year and a half. I feel like we go way back. Oh ho ho, we do see each other every day after all. I'm starting to crave some variety to be honest. I never found a good opportunity to ask you this, but... Yes? Do you have any family? Because if you do, you're more than welcome to have them live here. I appreciate your concern, my lord, but they have all passed away. All of them? Indeed. My entire family was eradicated at the lord at the previous lord's order. Once and only once. I offered him my humble opinion. So infuriated was he by my insolence that he had my family murdered. I would have much preferred myself killed in their stead, but he was a man who reveled in others' suffering. And you just kept on serving him? That is correct. I acted as his loyal servant, too afraid to speak up again. Acted? Recall what I said when we first met. 
I was st sitting in wait for the perfect opportunity. Now you understand why. Well, damn. And if I may come clean about that time, I had every intention of disposing of the revolution's puppet master. Never once did I trust Ginevra. Her foolish motives were plain as day. As the new lord's mother, she planned to control her planted usurper from the shadows, acting as the effective governor of the land. Having no family left myself, the city and its people are like my children. So I refuse to stand by and allow her to turn them into tools to satisfy her own avarice. The land would hardly survive a tyrant sweeping in to replace a tyrant. But she was removed from the board by the former lord before she had a chance to see her aspirations to fruition. Knowing she was no longer in danger, I decided I would wait and see how the successor fared before taking any further action to determine if you were sufficient to serve as lord of this land. And I guess I passed, huh? Are you not upset, my lord? Nothing to be upset about. You never hid the fact that you acted in your own interests. That if a piece had no value to you, you discarded it. And I always knew there was more than what you were telling me. I'll just say, I'm relieved to still be standing here. Ho oh, ho! If only you knew how close you were to falling on the other side of that line. Am I really that on edge? After all the work I've put into this? While you do have a rare aptitude and strength of spirit, you are still much too easily swayed by your emotions. And ergo, I shall continue to instruct you until you are able to fully satisfy my expectations. Tis rather curious, so oft do we speak, so great our time together. I have come to think of you as my second son. D don't get all mushy on me, old man. We're not friends, and we're not family. I'm a pawn on your board, and you are a pawn on mine. Strictly business. Oh, ho ho! My apologies. I never said a word. Right. Never happened. Moving right along. You just keep doing what you do best. At your service, my lord. Out of curiosity, do we have any free hands around capable of riding a horse? For what purpose? There's someone I want found. Whoever it may be you wish to find, my lord, I am obliged to remind you that... You don't even have to finish that. I know. I'm supposed to leave the past in the past. Let us see, then. Your men have their hands rather full at present, but we can perhaps arrange for one of them to be reassigned. Are you sure? It is a small request, and not once in your entire tenure have you requested to use your men for personal matters. I believe we can spare a hand or two on such rare occasions. 
much appreciated. Shall I arrange for them to set off immediately? Please. I'm looking for a girl. If she's alive, she'll look around 13 or 14. And she has unusual markings on her face. Markings akin to burn scars? Barnier once imprisoned her in this manner. He used her as a prop for his banquets, cutting her up from head to toe. My guess is that the patches on her face are a result of Barnier's abuse. Indeed, I know the girl. I presumed she had not survived the slave revolt. I take it you care quite deeply about this girl, my lord. Then allow me to offer my sincerest apologies in his stead. No need to apologize. Will you help me find her, Odalon? I will oversee the search operation personally to the best of my ability, my lord. I pray the girl is still alive. As do I, unlikely as it may be. I'm just chasing after a sliver of a dream that shattered long ago. That said, if you do find her alive, bring her here without telling her it's at the Lord's order. She'll likely assume it's the old Barnier who's after her if you say anything. And if she happens to have found a new home where she's happy, just leave her be. Understood. Time drifted slowly onward. As I'd anticipated, there was no news regarding her whereabouts. But new shops and stalls continued opening in the city with them coming a steady flow of travelers and passing merchants. And as traffic through the city increased, so too did the number of people seeking an audience with me. I was getting busier by the day. My plans to attract merchants and artisans from the capital had worked, and every one of them seemed to have a bigger more ambitious proposition than the last. My days became a cycle of meetings, reviewing propositions, balancing the budget, and deciding whether to pr proceed or postpone. And amidst all the tumult, my thoughts drifted even further from the poorest of my people. Pretty tired, so I'm gonna stop here. was discharged from the hospital today, so he's back at the, at the house now, um, but I'm going to head back to my house uh, tomorrow. Uh, <clears throat> anyway. Alright, well, good night, and I'll see you again soon.